new opportunities for scientists certainly did open up in the East and the West after the fall of the wall. And here to talk more about that is Professor Ernst Riechel. Now, he is a chemist by trade and the former president of the Leibniz Association, which is a group of more than 80 research institutes, including from the former East Germany. Thank you so much for being with us here today. Okay, so we saw that success story of that East German scientist who benefited from an exchange of ideas, but that wasn't always the case for most scientists from East Germany, was it? That's quite true, and it's due to the fact that uh, West and East did not try to find a new system. It was the West system which was used, and the East people had to adjust to that. And the criteria to work in that system, of course, were sometimes very different. In addition, their possible involvement in party mm -hmm. politics, etc., made it very difficult for many of them. And in fact, 22,000 people had lost their job in science at that time. Right, that was a, uh, quite a big number. Now, having said that, what for you was the most significant change in science here in Germany after reunification? I would say that uh, it resulted from the fact that the new institutions which were created in the former DDR were created of a, after a very uh, a strict evaluation procedure. And that evaluation procedure then was applied to West uh, uh, institutions. And that raised the level of quality mm -hmm. of all the institutions and made Germany among the best players in the world. So I think the fall of the wall uh, uh, created a new culture mm -hmm. of working together uh, and which for the benefit of science in general. I'm really putting Germany on the yeah. top of the map there. Well, what has been the role of your institute, the Leibniz Association? The Leibniz is a child of the reunification mm -hmm. because 31 institutes, which were formerly uh, in the DDR Academy, were converted to Leibniz institutions. Mm -hmm. And Leibniz didn't exist before the fall of the wall. And now it's the biggest uh, as institute-wise institution with 89 institutions, as you said before. Okay, now you are also on the board of trustees of the Falling Wall Conference, which meets every year on November 9th to honor scientists who tear down so-called walls in people's minds. Can you tell us a little bit more about this organization? That's exactly the idea. Uh, every scientist is born to the uh, uh, danger that it built up uh, walls in his mind, mm -hmm. dogmas, uh, authorities. Uh, and we asked our speakers to define what was the wall in your discipline you tried to break down and how did you do that? And that is a very fascinating story, a very personal story worldwide. And we see that walls exist everywhere. And mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the conference, we know better how to, to tear down these walls. And very briefly, um, your personal story, where were you on that fateful night, November 9th, 1989? I was in front of the television and yeah. our institute f celebrated because we had many uh, uh, people and colleagues in the East German side and, and we were just happy. Uh, it was just an overwhelming event. It certainly was. Okay, Professor Rachel, we thank you very much for your time today here on Tomorrow Today.